Hey everybody, welcome to today's webinar. We're here uh, to talk about intelligent data mobility for pure flash blade and flash array file. We call it flash for all unstructured data. Uh, this is Darren from Comprise, and I'm excited to be here uh, with the one and only Randy Hopkins. Hi, Randy. Hey, Darren. Doing well. <laughs> right. How are you doing? Great to see you. Great to see you. So yeah, let's let's jump right in, Randy. I got to spend uh, a little bit of time with you a few weeks ago in Las Vegas. Uh, you know, Comprise was a diamond sponsor at, at at the Pure Accelerate conference, and it was fantastic. You know, we we spent a lot of time talking to customers and partners, and got a picture of you in action. You were very busy. Uh, any any takeaways from you, or, or you know, how how was the show for you, Randy? It was good. It was it was great to see a lot of customers. We we sponsored the event, um, and there was a gazillion customers at our booth that, that came by to say hello. It, it's really um, interesting to see the the shift this year over last year. A lot more unstructured data conversations, and that's that's what we focused on. Yeah, and a lot of training sessions, right? This year that that you guys were able to attend. Yeah, yeah, a lot, lot more technical training, a lot more certifications, um, and uh, that was that was a request from the previous years. So that that was uh, well done this year as well. Nice, yeah. So it was a great show, and I, I was able to attend a number of the keynotes. Uh, it's always, you know, I love to do that and just to take in uh, how the how the you know our, our partners are presenting and, and introducing new solutions. There's a lot of innovation, uh, not surprising. A big theme of AI but also of simplicity, um, security, efficiency. I thought Pierre did a great job of, of you know, being consistent with their message um, and really focusing on what's in it for the customers, right? Which at the end of the day, <clears throat> organizations are, are trying to you know, figure it out. They're modernizing, they're trying to make sure you know, the costs are, are, are well managed and in control. Uh, and I thought they did a good job of really speaking to the, the needs and benefits of, of their customers and their partners like Comprise. So yeah, that was great uh, at the Accelerate show. So let's, one of the things we did at, at, um, at the show was we had a flash talk session. Um, Randy was able to uh, speak you know, to a number of folks and introduce Comprise. Um, and so that's what we wanna bring to you all today. We wanna you know, bring you a snapshot of, of what we presented at the conference and, and really give you an overview of, of the Comprise uh, solutions for pure storage. And you know, we've really tried to focus on the key messages and themes of the conference. And if you go to Pure's website today, a uh, big message is, you know, welcome to the new era of data services. And when you think about Comprise, that's really what we're delivering. We're delivering data services, right? Helping you get value across all of your storage systems, you know, maximize efficiency. As you see, you know, one of the, the key messages of the show, this is from the website for the conference, maximize efficiency with Pure Storage Platform, adapt to changing business demands, and accelerate today's and tomorrow's applications. So we really want to focus today on, and in our flash talk, on how Comprise can help you do that. So Randy, I'm going to kind of hand it over to you to uh, have you kind of take us through that, and then we'll uh, jump into a couple of interesting demonstrations. Cool. So uh, aligning, aligning this topic with the uh, maximizing efficiency and um, with a, a very comprehensive suite of pure storage platforms. That's what I'm going to be focusing on. Last year at uh, Sales Kickoff, Pure Storage announced a uh, the new Flashblade E series. They uh, Pure started shipping it in September, so we have, we're really capitalizing on uh, what Comprise can do to help that that platform strategy with Pure. So what? So I'll give you a little idea of what we're all about at Comprise and and what we do and, and why we do it. Uh, first of all, uh, unstructured data is massive. Um, for every one petabyte of block storage on the floor worldwide, uh, there's about six petabytes of unstructured data. Unstructured data uh, is 90% of the data being created now um, versus previous years. And that's the green bar that you see there. And so the, the historically customers and, and end users have just added additional storage. Um, and that's that's been a problem. So we're hearing from the customers, we need a different way of managing that unstructured data. Uh, it's expensive to keep adding and doubling storage every couple of years. It's also complex. Um, there's a lot of storage local. There's a lot of storage at the edge. There's a lot of storage in the cloud. There's multiple vendors. Um, and it's very difficult to look across that with a single pane of glass or a control plane. And 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 see what we have and and how and how to manage that. Um, and so finally, um, there's another there's a new there's a new kid on the block, and that new kid on the block is how do I 
find my unstructured data? How do I get it to where it needs to be efficiently? And 80% of that task is spent finding the data is where is it? How do I classify it? How can I get it automatically moved? And the whole data life cycle around that. So that's what Comprise does. And that's that's what we're helping uh, helping to do. And that's what we're, the problems we're solving. And we're gonna show you a little bit about how we do that. Um, first thing is we built a platform to manage all of the unstructured data um, globally for, uh, for our customers. We're a software platform. We, we connect to all the pure storage platforms um, to, and, and, and help them manage that unstructured data. So we can connect to all of the SMB shares, all of the NFS shares, all of the, all of the object store data, whether it be on-prem or in the cloud. And we build a global view of that, a global uh, database or unstructured uh, file, file index, if you will. And we enable users to understand what's on that data with an assessment. Um, do an assessment of that data, and then based on the assessment of the data, do something with it. It could be migrate, um, migrate, um, put it on the right platform based on performance, based on different file attributes, et cetera. So, and save me money. That's, that's also the big, the big one as well. Um, the, so the way we do that is we connect Comprise just like a backup operator would uh, from a software application. We connect to all of the all of the storage, uh, regardless of vendor. You see on this on this screen here that we're connecting to NetApp and AWS and Nutanix and Isilon, et cetera. And when we connect to that, what we enable the users to do during that assessment is to see what they have first, and and the things that we we show them are things like. Um, a, a view of all shares globally, and then be able to drill down into those shares globally, or 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 at a certain site, or at, at a share level, or at a directory or folder level. Leveraging that, leveraging that, build cost models of putting the right data on the right platform. A um, couple data points here is that 70%, 75% of all file data um, hasn't been accessed in more than a year. A little bit less of that, probably about 60% or 50% haven't been accessed in two years. Um, and that data is historically sat on the most expensive primary storage. Um, and what we're providing is the ability to do something different with that. And we do have these cost models built right into our platform to do a lot of what-if scenarios. So this is more about data mobility and right placing the data at the right time um, after we, you do the analysis. Um, so we also provide a lot of reports, um, things like, hey, can you show me how much orphan data is out there that hasn't that doesn't have a user? Can you have can you give me an estimate of how much data across my ecosystem is duplicate data across the ecosystem and and how many files, uh, et cetera? Can you can you show me things like um, how, a particular application or user? Um, how much data are they consuming? by application, by user, by directory, or any of the above. Um, how fast are they growing? Um, how much of their data is active? Um, and, and then not just tell me more about that, but actually do, do something with it. Um, we also give the ability to show a lot of heat maps um, based on file types, based on user, et cetera. And I'm gonna show you a few of these things here in a moment. So really what we're doing is giving the, the uh, in, during this assessment, we're giving the, the end user the ability to do something with their data and, and start planning for that. So Darren, do you wanna tackle this slide here? Yeah, I wanted to ask you a question too, just if I go back on that last slide for a second. Um, sure. we, didn't, we didn't go into the architecture in this presentation. We've had a couple of questions come in as we've been uh, presenting, mm -hmm. but one of them is always about the, oh, I'll build it again. Uh, is always about the architecture, and you know the question we got is: Does it's actually addressed in the third bullet? Does does Comprise sit in front of the hot data? Is it in the hot data path? Can you tell us why that's important to not be in the hot data path? Why why do customers ask that question, and why is it important? Yeah, yeah, you know, there's there's a number of ways that this has been done in in the in the past, and and the the the, the popular way a number of years ago was put agents on the servers, agents in the network, or put put a or, or, or neuter the operate the, the file system with a layer above the file system, um, and all of those mechanisms require the I/O to go through an agent of some sort. When you're going through an agent of some sort, now you're adding more complexity 
you're adding latency, you're adding a requirement to, to the end user to stick on that particular agent or they can't access their data. So what the way Comprise does this is we don't do it with agents. We don't do it, it with uh, uh, um, applications in the network. We're, we're not in front of the hot data path and we don't add any latency at all to, to the access to that hot data. Awesome. Yeah, we do get asked that a lot. We have some white papers on the topic, so we can definitely follow up on it. Um, we're, we're, we're used to that question. Um, and then you show deep analytics here. We'll come back to that. So so I just want to set this up uh, before Randy jumps in and shows you um, some of Comprise in action. Um, we talk about kind of know first, move smart, and take control as, as kind of key value propositions of Comprise. And knowing first means you really understand what you have, right? So you can make the right decisions, the right, you know, to actually move data to the right place at the right time. So to, to really be intelligent with your mobility. So we talk about it comprised being an analytics first data management solution. And here you can see a few examples that come from a typical assessment that we do. Um, so we look at your cold, cold data savings and look, this is based on some simulated data. So this can all be adjusted with your cost models. To, to determine you know, what percentage of your data is cold and what could the savings be if you were to actually move that data to a lower cost storage environment. Uh, orphan data, Randy mentioned, uh, you know, how much, what, what, what is the percentage of data that could potentially be cleaned up and, and, and really help you optimize your, your storage environment and then potential duplicates. So assessments are really you know, often how we get started. Uh, Randy, would, do you wanna add a comment on assessments? I know you're working with a lot of customers on these, on these today. Yeah, yeah. What we uh, there's a lot of use cases going on in the unstructured space. Um, one use case is save me money. Another use case is um, I want to I want to do a, a full data migration from from the old platform to the new platform. Um, we we these assessments help with with all those. Um, one example would be if there's a data migration going from one SMB share to a new platform, all flash uh, SMB share. Before you do the data migration, you, if you use a little bit of time on the assessments, is you can kind of predict a little bit better based on um, based on the assessment um, timing on how long it might take to migrate, or how much data should you clean up before you migrate. There might be years and years and years of old VM files that are sitting out on the old storage. We're going to show you that there might be there might be twenty percent of the data that's duplicate and they're old. Might we can show you that and then take action on that data before you do the data migration, and that's 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 really what it's all about with with assessments. So yeah. um, that's a great segue to migration as well. Um, yeah. So we'll talk about migration because that is usually the first thing organizations are thinking of, right? Help me get from here to there. Um, but but with an analytics approach, you can really make sure you're optimizing you know, the systems and moving the right data to the right place at the right time. So what is different about Comprise when it comes to migration? That's interesting. We, when we built Comprise, uh, I've been at Comprise over five years now, we, we didn't, um, migrations was, was not a, a, a key objective um, deliverable for our platform. It was more about analysis and analytics and assessment and, and cost savings. But we because we are an unstructured data uh, platform, we put migration into the platform. And believe it or not, most people think of Comprise, when they think of Comprise, they think of data migration. We make a, a significant amount of our business is data migration. And the reason it is, is because words out now that we have a, a fantastic um, data migration platform. Um, everything from doing an analysis of the environment and the ecosystem before we start doing the data migration, and nine times out of 10, when there's a problem doing a data migration, and they're hard, my data migrations are hard, they're clumsy. And, and the, the, the ask is, can you make it simpler? Can you find the problems in advance? And can you make it faster? So those, that's what we've done. And so these, those are the things that we do on the, in these boxes. The ACE, the ACE process, ACE toolkit, finds problems in the network before you start. Uh, Hyper transfer speeds it up. Um, often, if you're doing, if we're doing a data migration uh, of small files, for example, over a WAN, um, because we this this hyper transfer application that we built into our data migration really uh, it makes the net takes away the inefficiencies of the network and the latency across the network, um, and 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 our migrations as a result are anywhere from 18 to 20 times faster than historic data migrations without hyper transfer. So that's what we're seeing. We're seeing faster migrations, 
we're seeing migrations because of that. If something does break, something does fail, you can start the new migration, you know, quicker. And there's a lot of asks around: Can I do um, can I do a fan in migration? Can I migrate 30 edge devices or 30 edge volumes into a single location? We put that in our product. Can I can I pre-populate the target? We do we did that. Can I cut over to the to the to the new target while migration is still running? Basically, that's called a hot hot cutover. Can I do that? Yes, we could do that. Can you tell me how long that last iteration is going to run before I run the last iteration? We can do that. So these are a lot of these are some of the this is just a few of the things we put in our data migration platform. Awesome. And the last one before we jump into uh, the demonstration, really want to going to bring it back to the pure storage uh, solution. You talked about cost savings and you know transparent tiering with our TMT, which is a transparent move technology, has been core to Comprise. But over the last year, year and a half, we worked directly with the Pure team on a solution uh, we called Intelligent Tiering for Pure Storage. And actually, uh, there's a white paper published on the Pure website about this uh, that goes into a lot of specific details. Um, so tell us about this, Randy, why it's important and why it's getting so much uh, interest in the market. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 this is getting a lot of interest in the market. Um, at, for the same reasons that I mentioned before, is that customers want to control some of their costs. Um, they want to right place the data on the right platform, and it could be based on access time, it could be based on file type, et cetera. And that and that's that's important. Um, the, the the data might need to be uh, have extremely low latency, extremely high performance. So you wouldn't want to classify that and put it on a different class of storage. You want to keep it on a high performance class of storage. But files that that, that are less important, once it, after they're created, th those should those should be put on on the right class of storage. Um, and that and it should be transparent to the end user. Uh, it should be uh, seamless to the end user. And more importantly. The app files that are at their destination should be accessible both from the primary application storage and also from secondary applications so that you can data mine on those. And that's what we built. Awesome. Well, let's jump in. Let's let's go and uh, you know show yeah. Comprise in action. So I'll, I'll remove our faces here, and you can just focus on the screen. <laughs> let's do this. Let's do this. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to share my screen here and see if I can make this work. Okay. Um, here we go. So when you when you uh, log into Comprise, what what what, we're, what you're looking at is you're really looking at a control pane, and the control pane that you're looking at here shows that um, of of all of the files in Atlanta, for all the file shares in Atlanta, for example, um, there's about 1.2 petabytes, 28 million files, and my then the data is growing around 14% uh, per actually almost 20% per year. So you get you get a, a single view uh, at a very high level of, of what you've got on that in that whole environment. And in that whole environment, you kind of see a you see a heat map here. And what this heat map is is based on an attribute of time last access. So you get a quick view of how much data is hasn't been accessed in in three years, two years, one year, et cetera. And what we see generally is r around 70% of the data is blue. That means it hasn't been accessed in a year, for example. And, and that's very interesting in how much data has, has been accessed more recently. And, and, and what, we, what we usually start with with um, an assessment is giving the user a, view, a dashboard view across all of the different silos of storage, whether they be a Windows server, an Isilon, a NetApp, a, a pure flash blade, flash array file, et cetera. And that's what you're looking at here. It's a, it's a really a dashboard across all the silos. And from that dashboard, start doing some assessment and, and some analysis. We can. I'll show you a couple of the attributes that you can look at. You can look at things like uh, you can look at things like how how full are my uh, how full are the are the systems and and I'll open up a couple of these the the green check boxes here show that we've done analysis on those shares and the uh, the gray one says we haven't done analysis on those shares so we'll look at the ones where we've done the analysis on here we'll filter this by here we'll say status uh, enabled. So we'll look at all the shares that have analysis on them. Um, and you'll see here, we can we can look at, see how full are the, the fullest file servers. And you see that, you know, we can sort this by, by, by 
by fullness, the number of them that are in the 70% range, how much data is on there that hold, um, think how much data has been added recently. And then if you're doing data migration, you might want to know how many directories are there, how flat are the file systems, how deep are the file systems. So how many, how many directories are in them, um, how, many, how many items are there, and, and give, give the end user the ability to really see a little bit of a, a macro view as well as a micro view across all of their silos from a single pane of glass. How much data has been modified? How much data is, how fast is it growing? And, and we, we not only limit, we don't limit it to uh, the, this, the view of these uh, attributes you see here. We also have a number of columns that I didn't add to that view. We, you can add other columns in there as well to, to, view, to view that data based on, based on what you're interested in, in seeing uh, from, this, from this view. We also can do, run a report on this. Um, so if you want to select a, 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 you know, select a few of these and then run a report on it, for example, we want to see the, uh, the, this, you know, a view of a report based on this data that we've already selected, based on these columns we've already selected. We would, we'd want, run a report here, save that, save, save that, and then you can open that file, and that file will be a, a, a comma delimited uh, file that you can now view all that all that data here. And I'm not going to show it right here, but it's, it's available, and give you an idea of what that data looks like. So it gives you. A, a, a way to to drill into a macro macro view as well as a micro. You can say, I want to look at this isolon. I want to drill down into the uh, you know my my research folder and and see what's in that research folder. And uh, then in that research folder, uh, how many files, how many who owns the data, etc. And and view all the way down into these things. So another another way of looking mm -hmm. at this. What yeah. question was uh, asked is was how customizable is that view that you were showing uh, the data stores view? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, good, good question. Let's good question. Let's go back to so the, it's very customizable. Um, we can we can modify the uh, so you, if you look at this view, you see things that give alerts or or statistics of percentage cold. You can you can edit those those statistics and those 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 variables. We set it at fifty percent. We set it at one year. So all of these, all of these um, parameters are modifiable based on alerts, based on percentages of what you want to what you want to see. And it, we can also add or remove columns to this. For example, if I want to look at, I want to see, you know, data growth as my priority. I'll move data growth right up to the front here, right, right up by data size. So now, if I look at this, I can see. Um, you know, based on the storage platforms, how how much data is on those platforms, and how much data, how fast it's growing, and how much data has been added to it. So that was very very customizable. Good question, awesome. by the way. Mm -hmm. um, so let's go over to plan analysis, and plan, what plan analysis shows you, which is this area right here. This, I showed you that, that this donut here, and this donut shows you um, how how fast. How fast the data is being added to this platform to, to all these platforms across the board, and then we we can show you the the usage. So we can say across that whole ecosystem in Atlanta, what what file types are consuming most of the space? And you can see here a bunch of video files and archive files. Uh, we can view it by file size. We can view it by top owners, top groups, directories, shares, etc. And we do, and you're not limited to looking at it from a macro perspective. A lot of folks say, I just want to work today on a specific share. You can go over to here and say, I want to do a specific share here. And now you're looking at that share, and that share is 140 terabytes. And and again, same thing. You could look at the the data on that share and 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 the view of that share because you might be thinking about doing a data migration of that one. Um, and you can all, then run a report on that and get use that report for build back purposes, use that report for planning your data migration. And what's really cool about this is um, you can look over here under analysis activity for a data migration plan, you can see how many directories are in there, how many files are in there, how many long file names that are, that are out there, and, and, and start doing some planning for that data migration. And so that's one of the things that we provide as well. Um, 
another another view another thing that you can do here is now now comes the can you can you can you balance the data across a couple different classes of storage and we'll use we'll use that as an example here over here on the left and can you see, tell me how much money that's going to save me if, if i do that well so we'll look at that one share and, and that one share that our, our customers will enter their costs here so storage hardware costs on the primary storage would be an annual cost. So you'd have to figure out what those costs are. That you'd have to put in your costs based on your, your, your acquisition, your subscription. You, you know, you, you can go all the way down into power, heating, cooling, HVAC costs, et cetera. Put those costs in here for what, what it costs you to maintain that storage. If you're, if you're replicating it to a DR site, uh, you, you'd, you'd put the, the cost for the DR site here. And then in order to replicate that or back up that data, how much are you paying for terabyte per year? Now, think about classes of storage. If you want that, if you're planning on having different a balance of that data across two different classes of storage, what is this, what is the cost of that secondary class of storage? It could go to the cloud, you know, and the cloud might have egress charges, so you can calculate that. Or we're seeing we're seeing a, a lot a lot of customers now wanting to uh, tier that to an on-prem target. And then you put the costs there. So we'll, we'll save that and, and then we'll show you exactly how you would set something up to, to do that. So what we've got here is we've got a, the, the opportunity to say, I want to tier, uh, tier my, uh, uh, or, or balance the data across a NetApp over to a, to a Flashblade E, for example. We could, we could also do tier across from a flash array SMB share to 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 an SMB share as well, but we'll we'll use this we'll use two different vendors here to show you how we how we're, we're, we work across vendors here. So what what you do is here is go click on say I want to move data that hasn't been accessed over to a flash blade E, and based on based on what parameter we'll say if the if the if the data hasn't been accessed in in let's say let's say one year. If the data hasn't been accessed in one year, how much data has that been? Is that is that? It represents about forty-eight percent of the data on that particular volume, and then and then how much? And how do you you can done editing? And now you you have a report here that says if I if I balance the data across those two different platforms, how much money is that going to save me over a three-year period? You can run a run a report on that, save that report before you run this, and and, and that way you can. Um, Give, get get an idea of exactly what that looks like, and this report shows you that particular uh, scenario. Um, the cost savings about four hundred thousand dollars over three years, and here here is all of the assumptions and all the data that that uh, that we found that, that meets that criteria. So you can leverage those reports too. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. I'll go into. I'll go into deep analytics here now. So, so deep analytics is the ability to continue that analysis of your data. And, and what this is, is this is leveraging our, our uh, global file index where, where that's really like a, a database of all of the attributes of the files, if you will, it, you know, call it a global file index or a database that we maintain. And what I've built is I built a query here called Pete Rose engineering files. And, and um, what that query is, is shows that all shares in Atlanta, where the file types are video, audio, or virtual machines that are engineering group, and they equal Pete Rose. And you see that, that Pete Rose might have left the company. We want to find out where his data is located uh, based on this particular file type. Um, we can get a detailed list of those files. We can show um, you know, the owners of those, which they're all Pete Rose, for example. And, and get a report based on on all that data, and then do something with it. So we built a query. We found 1,800 files. We can we can now leverage that query to move that data to a different location. We can leverage that query to delete those files. We can leverage that query to copy those files. We can leverage that query to put those into immutable storage, for example. So th that's that's what the, that's what the power of the deep analytic, analytics provides. We can also run a new query, and a new query would say, "I want to find all my orphan data um, out out in the out in the ecosystem." So if I say, "I want to find all data 
that's orphaned. That means the, the user doesn't work here any longer. You can see there's 65, 6,500 files, 300 gigabytes. And you can say, OK, where is all that orphan data? And, and you, you scroll down here and you find where those, that orphan data is and, and do something uh, with it. So, so back um, on the deep analytics, can you just show um, some of the filtering options so you can, um, you know, there was a question about being able to find specific file types. Is that something you could use deep analytics for? Yeah, sure. Different file types, let's see here. New query, boom. Okay. So we, so you said by file types, Darren. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we can we can go out and say I want to find all file types of virtual machines. How many VMs do I have in my ecosystem? Four million VMs. Okay. For example, and out of those file type, out of those, I want to find all of them that haven't been accessed or turned on more than two years ago. Add yeah. boom. Okay, so th th there's not th th this is this is virtual machines that haven't been turned on in more than two years, and I want to look only in a specific file server. For example, we'll look at the corporate flashblade. Uh, let's see, let's find one that has a uh, an NFS share here. Here's an NFS share share here here in Boston, for example, and so th this shows all VMs that haven't been turned on more than two years ago in that particular share in in Boston, for example. And now we, we can save that query as a, as a new name, big VMs old in Boston on, on that on that Isilon. We save that query, and now we can do something with that query. That might be very handy if you're doing a, a planned data migration and you find that there's uh, a gobs of data that haven't been accessed for a while. You can really drill down into it and uh, set up a an automated process to to clean those clean those things up. That's sure. really powerful. I, I was going to make a comment about Pete Rose maybe being eligible for the data hoarding Hall of Fame, but um, we can continue. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And and another one, you know, the well kept secret for, from some people and what other people think of us when they think of Comprise is the data migration engine. Uh, since we've connected to all of the shares, uh, uh, you know, that 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 uh, that are out there in the ecosystem, uh, we we can do data migration with them, and we're extremely efficient. Uh, extremely simple, extremely fast, and I, I actually started a data migration a few a little while ago, where I'm actually migrating a uh, I think it's an SMB share here, yeah, from from a, a file server called CorpWin over to a, a pure Flash array, and what you're looking at here is how much data has been migrated, how many directories, and the way the way we operate is we'll do a single iteration first, and we'll move all that data you know, as much as much as we can if it hasn't been opened. And then after that first iteration finishes, there will be there will be a, a little bit of a delay. You can shorten that delay as short or long as you like. Uh, the second iteration will run, and and we will keep running those iterations. and And by doing this, you get a really good idea of how long it's going to take to cut over, because each iteration will tell you how long it took to run, how much data has been moved, how many new files, um, et cetera. So I won't I won't go into a training session here, but I just wanted to make you aware that um, data migration um, is hard. Uh, we've made it a lot simpler, uh, and uh, and and um, and happy to drill down into that in a in a future a future um, presentation. Awesome. Um, I think I think that kind of walks us through most of the uh, most of. Oh, I didn't show you the reports yet. So there's also a reports tab here. So the reports tab will show you. Some of the assessment uh, content that um, we we showed you earlier in this presentation, things like we want to look at the migration summary, um, orphan data. We want to get a report of all the orphan data, or potential duplicates, um, or or showback. Uh, based that that would be showing um, the groups and users and, and and directories how much consumption that they're they're using, how much it's costing, um, et cetera. And these are all customizable reports. We can say I want to I want to show uh, you know, duplicate data across you know two different two different uh, platforms. Here's two different platforms. Apply, and then ba based on that, we're looking at data that's duplicated across th these two different storage vendors, um, and then we can generate a, a PDF or a comma delimited file, and uh, and this will show you what what you know the data that's likely duplicate 
across those two different platforms. So on, the, on those two different platforms, it looks like there's about 400 terabytes of potential duplicates. And then we can we can drill down, look at those files uh, individually, or we can sort by, by size, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, okay, that's, uh, that's what I've got, Darren. And I think we will go ahead and stop sharing the screen and move on to the next uh, phase. Yeah, that was great, Randy. You showed a lot and covered a lot. And as you mentioned, you know, we do training sessions on this and there's a lot to go through. Um, but I think you gave us a really good overview of, of kind of the whole you know, ability to start with the assessment and then determine the right way to move data between, you know, whether it's migration or tiering and then that ongoing data lifecycle management that, that, that Comprise delivers. So let's just um, we'll wrap up with, you know, a, a common scenario. Uh, this is a state government, uh, one of our customers who, you know, the use case here, they came to us as, hey, we're, we're doing a migration off Isilon. And we, we, we see a lot of that. Um, and in this case, you know, migrating from, from Dell, you know, EMC Isilon to, to Flashblade. And, um, and, you know, I think, as you said, Randy, the initial use case is, hey, we have a migration, but we did sort of step back and, and actually did an assessment and then figured out, you know, what combination of tiering and migrating was needed. Is that this is pretty yeah. typical? Yeah, it's very typical um, because th those questions come all the time. When you're trying to scope out the new storage, um, it's, you have to understand what the current situation is before you scope out the size, performance, and capacity of the new storage. So, yeah, it's very important to, to, to use an assessment to be able to figure that out. Yeah, so this is a common one. Uh, there's more of these on our website. Um, and, you know, just to kind of to bring it back to what we set up at the beginning of the themes of the Accelerate Conference, when it comes to you know maximizing efficiency, you know Comprise can help by giving you that visibility across silos, being able to then right place data, you know, and making sure your your high performance you know uh, data is running in the right spot, and the data that you might not need to access as frequently is on a lower cost uh, tier. Uh, the second is adapting to business change and demand, so data mobility uh, to pure to cloud services. You know, comprise partners closely with with AWS, with Azure. You know, there's usually some combination we're seeing of hybrid uh, in the environment, and we want to make sure you're you're optimizing all all environments uh, to maximize performance and savings. And the last one, accelerating today's and tomorrow's applications. You know, there's so much happening in AI, AI innovation. Uh, comprise has introduced uh, smart data workflows. We didn't go into that in today's demonstration, but we have a a smart data workflow manager interface that allows you to interact with and integrate with uh, AI services so that you can really, as Randy said at the beginning, bring those subsets of data to your AI engines and really optimize and, and, and get maximum value uh, from that data. Anything I missed here, Randy, in terms of our, our, our comprise uh, solutions for, for pure storage and beyond? Yeah, yeah let's, let, let's, uh, let's stick on that smart data workflows for another minute or two. Um, yeah, what, what that means is um, I mentioned that earlier that um, it's very difficult and 80% of the time is, is spent uh, in an AI conversation trying to find the right data. So be, because we have a, an index of all the files in the ecosystem, um, what you can leverage Comprise to do on that is, um, is build, build queries to say, I want to find specific types of data and I want to move that data to the right location for my AI engine. And I showed you the queries, I showed you the attributes, and, and it could be it could be uh, 20 or 30 different edge devices with a specifically a type of file, maybe a trace file or something, where those are being created all the time. And, and you might want to take a look at those files and move those into the AI engine, but you might want to look at the contents of it first. We, we can do that. Um, you might want to say, um, I want to find um, PII data. Uh, and if it's got PII data, the, uh, PII content inside files, uh, I want to find those types of files and, and leverage that for an AI engine or do something else with that with that data. So um, we didn't we didn't really talk much about smart data workflows. And I, di I didn't show it to you, but I did show you the query engine. But we are able to, to, to do that. And, and think of a, a cycle that that says, I want to find files that are owned by a particular user of a particular type um, as they're created, um, put them into the data bucket. What we'll do is we'll wake up every day and look for those files and put them in the right location. 
So that's kind of an example of smart data workflows and feeding an AI initiative. Yep. Yep. And more to come. Uh, there's some interesting yeah. use cases, you know, especially, you know, it's yeah. around PII detection, making sure that sensitive data is detected and, and dealt with. Um, so there's a lot that that's um, possible here with Comprise around both cost savings and getting value from that unstructured data that's growing exponentially. So just to, to give you a, um, there's our friend Yoda, may the file be with you. Uh, yep. Give you a little, you know, next steps. You can go learn more about Comprise for Pure Storage on our website. Um, we also will, we're excited to be sponsoring the New York event uh, in October. So definitely register with that, for that if you're in the uh, in that area. And, and you know, we we, are, we we really appreciate the partnership and look forward to you know helping our customers really you know unlock that value and and be able to know first, move smart, and take control. But Randy, I'll give you the last word. Last word. <clears throat> Thank you very much for joining. And um, if you need any help uh, with, with any sort of data assessment, just to, to get an idea of what you got, let, let me know. All right. Thank you all for joining today. Thank you, Randy. Great job. And we look forward to uh, working with you in the future. Check out comprise.com for more information. Thanks. Bye, Darren. Bye.